Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be taking a look at item models in Minecraft. They recently got a bit of an overhaul in a recent version of Minecraft. So now we have the ability to customize the way items are shown in the inventory. And we can do so much with this, including conditionally showing different item models based on different parameters of the world, such as whether the user is holding the item or even the time of day. This is how, for example, the vanilla clock works. It shows a different texture based on the time of day. The compass, both this compass and the recovery compass, show a different model based on a position in the world. There's also, of course, the bundle, which if you put items into it, you can scroll through the items and it changes its texture as you scroll through. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so in VS Code, the first thing I've done is just created a pack.mc meta in my new resource pack right here called items. And what I'm gonna do is create a couple of new folders. This is going to override vanilla features. So I'm going to say assets slash Minecraft. And inside of here, we'll create a new folder called items. This is where all of our items are going to be stored. And so every single item in the game of Minecraft has a file in here. So let's go ahead and create a new file. We were looking at the jungle log over here. So we're gonna go ahead and create a new file called jungle log.json. This is where Minecraft is gonna look first to decide what to show for the item. So let's go ahead and define our first key model. And this is an object with a type and we get to choose a type. Now there's several different types as you can see here. The most simple of which is Minecraft model and this just allows you to define a symbol model for your item this model will be shown no matter what when your item is displayed in the inventory but if we say minecraft block slash oak slab it will reference the existing model file for the oak slab and in its place it will display an oak slab instead of a jungle log so let's go to minecraft and go ahead and enable our resource pack and as we can see right here it shows an oak slab instead of a jungle log. Now, in all other aspects, this is still a completely normal jungle log. You can place it, you can stack it, you can do anything you could do with a normal jungle log. The only difference is that it looks exactly like an oak slab, but even if you hover over it, it still says jungle log. What if we wanted to do our own custom model and texture? So let's go ahead inside of assets, we'll create our namespace folder. Our resource pack is called items and we will make a new folder called models slash item. And here we can create a new file, mymodel.json. And the reason we're calling it my model is because it doesn't matter what you call it. All we have to do is define what model we want to use inside of our model file right here. This my model file is not new. All we have to do is define a parent. We'll say item slash generated and we'll say textures layers zero items, which is our namespace item slash my texture. And there we have it. We just need to define my texture inside of our textures file. So inside our namespace, we'll go textures slash item and we'll go ahead and drag in a texture. Okay, so here we go. I've created a little bit of a smiley face texture. It says textures item my texture.png. That's what we've defined in our item model right here, item slash my texture. And then inside of our override for Minecraft's item, we've got jungle log defining that we're going to use the model Minecraft block slash oak slab. Let's change this to use items, item slash my model. And now we should be all set. So let's go back to Minecraft, reload our texture pack. And as you can see, we've got a bunch of smiley faces instead of jungle logs. Again, this still works just like normal. The only difference is that it looks like a smiley face. Okay, so next I'm gonna go ahead and rename this to smile.json. This is our model right here. So we need to change this smile. And I'm going to rename our texture also to smile. And so we need to change this model file right here, item slash smile. And now we've got this named smile and I'm gonna create a new texture. I'm just gonna copy this, name it frown, and I'm going to change the smile into a frown. I'll also create a new item model called frown.json and I will say parent item slash generated textures, layer zero, items, item slash 
brown. And now we have two models that we can use. We could go ahead and switch our model from smile to frown if we wanted. And then it would show a frown in game when we reloaded our texture packs. But there's a lot more you can do, including conditionally showing one model versus the other, depending on factors in the game. So to start, let's delete this right here. And instead of type Minecraft model, we'll say Minecraft condition. And this will allow us to conditionally show a different item depending on this property field. We've got Minecraft broken, Minecraft bundle has selected item, etc. The one we're going to look at first is selected. And this is going to activate when the item is selected in the user's hotbar. So I'm going to now say on false. This is what happens when the property is not active. So when this item is not selected, we're going to use this model. And this is the same model we've got defined up here. So we're just going to say type Minecraft model and we'll give it a model items items slash round. It's going to be a little sad when we're not holding it. Then we can give it an on true and we'll say type minecraft model again and this time the model will be items items slash smile so now whenever this condition of minecraft selected is false it will show our model item frown if it's true it will show the smile model so let's go ahead and check out our game we'll reload our texture packs and as you can see right here they're both still frowning but if we select them in our hotbar, they turn into smiley faces. Now quickly, let's take a look at another condition we can use. Instead of Minecraft selected, we can say Minecraft carried. And this has to do with whether the item is being carried within the inventory by the user's mouse. So let's go ahead and back into the game. That was all we had to change for that. And now they're frowning no matter which one we select in our hotbar. But when we click on it in the inventory, it turns into a smile while it's being carried. But what if we wanted it to smile when it's being carried or when it's selected in the hotbar? Well, what we can do is nest these conditions. So when this carried condition turns out to be false, we can change this from a model to another condition and we'll give it a property minecraft selected and on false then we know that both of these are false and so we can show a model items items slash frown otherwise on true we can show the smile and now if the first condition minecraft carried is false it will go ahead and evaluate the second condition but if it's true it will just show the smile and if it gets to the second condition up here it will evaluate whether it is selected. And if it is selected, it will show the smile. But if not, it will show the frown if both of these conditions have returned false. So let's go ahead and test this out. So as you can see, oops, we have a little bit of a typo here. Let's try that again. Whenever we select our item, it turns into a smiley face. And whenever we pick it up, it turns into a smiley face. So as you can see, we're picking them up and we've got them in our hotbar. Whichever one we select turns into a smiley face. Now I'm gonna show you how to do something a little more advanced. And for this, we're gonna override the item model for a different item, netherite pickaxe.json. And for this one, we're just gonna give it a type of Minecraft range dispatch. This one, just like condition, gets a property and we get a different set of properties that we can pick from. The one we're gonna use right now is Minecraft damage. And this is gonna correspond to how damaged the item is. Then I'm gonna add an entries property. This is a list of models. We get a model with a type of Minecraft model, for example. Of course, you can also combine this with conditions if you wanted to set a Minecraft condition here, but we're not gonna do that today because that's a little bit complicated. Then we can give it a model of say items, items slash frown. So when the item is almost dead, we want it to show a frowny face to let the user know that this pickaxe is dying. Now we're gonna add a threshold property. This threshold property is going to define where this model is gonna be visible. The Minecraft damage range goes from zero to one. So what we'll do is say if it's less than 0 0.25, it will go ahead and show the frowny face. And then we're going to define another one 
with a model type minecraft model with a model of minecraft items slash netherite pickaxe so this is just going to be our default texture and we'll give it a threshold of 1.0 so anytime it's less than 1.0 it will show this netherite pickaxe except when it's less than 0.25 when it will show the frowny face now what we also need is a fallback in case the damage property does not work so I'll say fallback, and this is another item model with a type of Minecraft model. We can say model Minecraft item slash netherite pickaxe. And now that we've got our fallback, this will show whenever, for example, the item doesn't have any damage. If it's a brand new item, it'll show the fallback. So in Minecraft, let's reload our texture pack, grab ourselves a netherite pickaxe. And as you can see, it looks completely normal, but I'm gonna go ahead and modify this item components so that it is a little bit damaged. Minecraft damage equals, for example, 20. This is gonna be a lightly damaged pickaxe and it still looks like a netherite pickaxe. Now let's give ourselves one that's damaged all the way down to less than 25%. And look, it turns into a frowny face and you can still see the durability bar in front of it but we've got our frowny face netherite pickaxe because it is almost dead and so the player will surely notice this as they're mining along and their pickaxe turns into a frowny face. There is so much more that you can do with this item system. I don't have time to go over it all in this video, but if you check out the Minecraft wiki, you can actually look up items model definition and there is an extensive list of everything that you can do with these item models. This is a really cool feature and what's also really cool is that you only need a resource pack to do it you don't even need a data pack. Check this out, I'll leave a link in the description. And if you have an idea of what to make with these item models, you can probably do it if you look through this wiki. Another interesting feature is that you can use commands to give yourself an item that looks like another item using this feature. So there's this item model component on each item. And if we give ourselves, for example, Keisha boat, we can set an item component on it, Minecraft item model. We can set that to be, for example, Minecraft jungle log, and it's gonna use the jungle log item model instead of the Acacia boat. So as you can see, we've got an Acacia boat, and this Acacia boat uses the jungle log item model, which we defined earlier, to be a frowny face that turns into a smiley face when you pick it up or hold it. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it inspired you to make your own item models and data packs and maps. If you did enjoy the video, please hit the like button and subscribe so you don't miss any more videos like this. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.